start. So once again, hi everyone. My name is Valentin. I'm a .NET engineer at SoftServe, almost seven years. And today I would like to tell you about the garbage collector pressure. It's a very interesting topic for me and uh, I hope for you as well, uh, because in my daily routine, I'm uh, having tasks related to the garbage collection or um, actually can see its pressure. So, um, and it's very interesting for me to see maybe some improvements in most recent versions of the .NET core versus the .NET framework. Because in the recent years, uh, the trend of transition from the old complete .NET framework to the new .NET core is gaining momentum. And one of the biggest reasons is the performance improvement, uh, improvements that .NET core offers us. According to Microsoft, a lot of work has been done on the garbage collector in NetCore because memory management, especially garbage collector pressure, still has a huge impact on the performance. Despite this, memory problems have not completely disappeared. And it is still important to understand how memory works and how to deal with uh, these problems. So today in this presentation, we will look at the causes of garbage collector pressure, compare the performance of the garbage collector in the net framework and net core when pressure occurs. And um, I assume we will discuss possible ways to reduce it. Um, I assume my presentation will take about an hour. And if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me and ask. And in the end of the presentation, I will look through the chat if we will have some questions there. But first, let's start and uh, let me recap on how actually is garbage collector works. So net garbage collector manages the allocation and uh, release of memory for your application. Each time you create a new object, the seller allocates memory for the object from the managed heap. If the address space is available in the managed heap, the runtime continues to allocate space for new objects. However, as we know, memory is not infinite. Eventually, the garbage collector must perform a collection in order to free some memory. When the garbage collector performs a collection, it checks for objects in the managed heap that are no longer being used by the application and performs the necessary operations for reclaim the memory. In large application, the number of objects that garbage collector needs to deal with can be become very large, which means it can take a very long time to visit and rearrange all of them. To deal with this, uh, Net uses a generational garbage collector, which tries to give priority to a smaller set of objects. The idea is that objects created recently and more likely to be released quickly. So a generational garbage collector prioritizes them when trying to free up memory. So Net first looks at the objects that have been allocated since the last garbage collection and only starts to consider older objects if it can't free up enough space of memory in this way. There are three generations of objects in heap. Generation zero is the youngest generation and contains short-lived objects. Garbage collection occurs most frequently in this generation and newly allocated objects from a new generation of objects are implicitly generation zero collections. However, if they are large objects, they go on the large object heap in a generation two collection. Most objects are reclaimed for garbage collection in generation zero and do not survive to the next generation. Generation one contains short-lived objects and serves as a buffer between short-lived objects and long-lived objects. Generation two contains long-lived objects, um, as we can see here on the slide. Objects that survive a generation zero garbage collection are promoted to generation one. Objects that survive a generation one garbage collection are promoted to generation two. And objects that survive a generation two garbage collection remain in generation two. When the garbage collector detects that the survival rate is high in a generation, 
it increases the threshold of allocations for the generation. Collecting the generation means collecting objects in that generation and all its younger generations. A generation two garbage collection is also known as full garbage collection because it reclaims all objects in all generations. So what about the garbage collector pressure? Garbage collector pressure occurs when the garbage collector does not keep up with the memory deallocation. When you are creating new objects and disposing of them too quickly for the garbage collector to keep up. When the garbage collector is pressured, it will spend more time garbage collecting and these collections will come more frequently. When your application spends more time garbage collecting, it spends less time executing code. Those directly hurting their performance. Well, the good news here is that actually you can avoid garbage collector pressure in your net and net core applications by following certain best practices that we will discuss in this presentation uh, using some code examples. Also with the release of new versions of the net, uh, community managed to improve the performance of the garbage collector itself, which also leads to a decrease in the pressure of the garbage collector. So let's take a quick look at the major garbage collector improvements in the most recent versions of net release. So here on the slide, you can see the most uh, recent release uh, related to net core. Actually it's net core 3.1 and starting from the um, net core 5, it's called net. So we actually now uh, deal with net 5 and the most recent release is the net 6 and actually it's net core releases. So as you can see here there are a lot of uh, actually check-ins related to the garbage collector itself and as you can see the most significant of them are uh, released in net 5 it's uh, like optimized the committing garbage collector heap memory pages or reduce the time that takes for a garbage collector to suspend treats, etc. etc. But the most significant changes are related to net six, and actually they are ongoing right now. Uh, I'm talking especially about switching the garbage collector implementation to be based on regions rather than segments. I assume it could be uh, a huge change and uh, we will get a lot of performance here, but currently in the current net six uh, release, it's actually included, uh, but it's not used in it. It used only for testing now. And I assume that uh, um, in the next versions of net six, actually we will see it uh, already used in that releases. So as you can see with each new release, a lot of attention actually is paid to improving the garbage collector. And now let's discuss a few common cases when garbage collector pressure can occur and uh, how actually it affects performance. But first let's look at the tool that we will use actually to measure this performance. So as a tool of measuring, uh, I'm using the benchmark.net uh, NuGet package. Uh, I'm using the latest its version. Also, all the measuring tests are performed on 11th gen Intel Core i9 processor. And uh, here I'm using the most recent versions of Net Framework and uh, Net6. So here we can see that we are using Net Framework 4.8 and netcore 6. And uh, the main values of the benchmarks uh, are in the right side of the slide. Actually, it's mean, it's arithmetic mean of all measurements. Also, it's allocated. Uh, here we will see the actually allocated memory, uh, depending on our examples. And actually, now let's look at the common causes of garbage collector pressure in action. So net provides a lot of collection types like lists, dictionaries, etc., etc., and all 
those collections have dynamic size capacity. That means they automatically expanded in size as you add more items. Whenever the collection reaches out its limit, it will allocate a new larger memory buffer and actually usually its NRI doubled in size. That means an additional allocation and deallocation. And now let's take a look at the following example. So here I have uh, the list and the dictionary collections with the default capacity that are actually will be expanded in size. And um, the index value is 1000 items. Uh, so let's see the results of executing these uh, methods in net framework and net core. So as we can see here, the location when executing these methods are actually considerable, but even with all of the same allocation values, net six is actually faster. So this tendency we can see for both the methods with both the collections. And actually, yeah, as we can see, net six is faster. But this is dependent to the dynamic uh, size of the collection. But Mm, what if we will set the initial capacity of the collection? Let's see the example. So here I set the list size that is 1000 items uh, for both all the collections. And now let's see the benchmark results. And as we can see, the net six is faster here as well. The location values are pretty the same, but almost twice less for list and is three times less for dictionary that were related for the dynamic size capacity. So as a result, by setting the capacity, we saved almost 30% uh, in performance time. And actually in practice, the improvement in performance is probably even greater because the benchmark.net performs garbage collection before and after each benchmark run. So actually, as you can see, setting the initial size of dynamic collections can be for us very useful. Um, and um, uh, also when we are using the big amounts of data in our collections. Do you have any question at this point? No questions. No. Okay, let's move forward and to see some other examples. So the allocation of arrays can be quite costly. Performing this allocation in highly frequency will cause garbage collector pressure and actually hurt the performance. So as the solution here, we actually can use such thing like array pool, it's a NuGet package. The idea is the shared buffer for arrays is allocated, uh, which you can reuse without allocating and deallocating memory. So let's see how it looks like. Uh, we have two methods here. In the first method, we initialize a regular array. And the second method, we use actually array pool with uh, array size that already set for 1,000 items. And let's see the benchmark results. So as we can see, the regular array allocation time stays almost the same as well as the allocation values. And for the array pool, allocation are absent. And the net six is twice faster. So I assume it's actually a huge improvement in the performance. So array pool help us to minimize memory allocations and garbage collection overhead and thereby increase efficiency and performance. And actually this can be used in situation where you might want to minimize allocations and increase efficiency by avoiding frequent creation and destruction of regular arrays. And actually, as we can see, it's very useful thing to increase our performance in our applications. Any questions here? 
no questions. Okay. Let's see another one example related to arrays. Also, actually, when using arrays with a short life cycle, garbage collection can be avoided using the stack alloc. The stack alloc keyword in C sharp allows for very fast allocation and deallocation of unmanaged memory. The stack alloc operator allocates a block of memory on the stack. Stack allocated memory block created during the method execution is automatically uh, discarded when that method returns. A stack allocated memory block is not subject of garbage collection. So let's see it on the examples. So here we have two methods. In the first method, we create an instance of class uh, through the new operator. In the second method, we use the stack alloc keyword. Uh, and actually, let's see the results of the benchmark of these methods. So as we can see for stack alloc, it helps to avoid the allocation. But in both methods, the difference in performance actually is not significant. So this is the point actually for uh, this kind of improvement of the uh, garbage collection in net framework and net core. So uh, not all the performance improvements in the most recent net core version, so just net, are actually um, uh, faster than the net framework. But actually for the allocation, the results you can see on this slide is quite significant. So for a race with a short life cycle, we actually can use stack alloc for fast allocation and release from memory. Do you have any questions here? No questions. Okay, let's move forward and see some other interesting examples. And the next example will uh, be related to the structs and classes. So actually, class allocations are more expensive than struct allocations. And it all because the structs have several benefits when it comes to deallocation. When structs are not part of class, they are located on stack and don't require garbage collection at all. Structs are stored on the heap uh, when they are part of the class. In that case, they are stored in line and are deallocated when the containing type is deallocated. And also, also structs uh, take less memory than a reference type because they don't have an object heap and the method table. So let's take a look at the following example. In the first method, we created an array of classes. And in the second method, we create an array of structures. Uh, class and structure has two properties, X and Y, as you can see here, we are setting them here. And the index is 1,000 items. And let's see the benchmark results. So as we can see, allocation of structs is much faster compared to classes. We don't have uh, the structure in Gen 1, all allocated in Gen 0. And um, I assume the values are pretty good related to structures and uh, actually the uh, net 6. So try to use structures instead of less if it's possible. And uh, please use structs when the, the following is true. The struct size is less than or equal of 16 bytes. The struct is short-lived. The struct is immutable. And the struct will not have to be boxed frequently. Do you have any questions here? No questions. OK. Let's move forward and let's talk about the finalizers. Actually, finalizers in C Sharp are very expensive for several reasons. Any class with a finalizer is automatically promoted to a generation by the garbage collector. This means they can be garbage collected in generation zero, which is the fastest generation. Also, the finalizers is placed 
in the finalizer queue handled by a single dedicated thread. This can cause problems if some finalizers run for a long time or draw an exception. So we have two classes, one with a finalizer and the second one is without finalizer. And the, in the first web method, we are using the class with finalizer. And in the second method, we are using the class without finalizer. So let's see the benchmark results here. As we can see, the results are in favor of classes without finalizer with almost equal allocation values and even faster execution on net for framework. So this is another one example that uh, uh, the latest releases are not so uh, fast as the net framework release. So, as a result, try to avoid finalizers. And if they are necessary, for example, when using the dispose pattern, you should suppress the finalizer in actually your source code. Any questions here? Okay, no questions. And let's talk a bit about the strings. As you probably know, when you concatenate strings, a new string object is allocated populated with the content and eventually garbage collected. To prevent these new allocations and improve performance, actually the string builder class was created. But uh, the things are not so good for the string builder in this situation. Let's see on the examples. So here we can see two methods. In the first method, we use the regular concatenation. In the second method, we use an interpolation. And let's see the measurement results for these two methods. So we can see a slight advantage of net six in execution speed and actually allocation values. But let's take a look on these examples. Here in the first method, we using string builder. And in the second method, we use string form. So let's see the measurement results. And as a result, we can see a slightly advantage on net six in execution speed and allocation values for the string builder here. But in uh, comparison with all four concatenation methods, string builder actually does not offer any advantages against a single expression concatenation with a small number of strings. Regular concatenation are more efficient than string builder for a small number of concatenation. But let's look like an example of concatenating multiply expressions. So here we can see two methods. The first uh, method we concatenate with uh, 1000 repetitions. In the second method, we use the creation of a new string builder objects and concatenate the strings. Then let's see the results. And actually we can see the significant advantage of string builder here in terms of speed and allocation values. However, net4 still actually managed a little faster. So related to strings and string builders, just try to use the string builder for multiple concatenation. And actually depending on string size, using the string builder, string builder becomes more efficient with over um, 10 concatenation. Also here string builder can be optimized by setting its initial capacity and by reusing the same instance. This can make a difference for actually very frequent usages like logging. So we have looked at some of the most common methods for minimizing the impact of garbage collection pressure uh, on the performance and compared it in net framework and net core. And now let's discuss uh, some additional general rules that helps to avoid garbage collector pressure in your applications. So in general, there are 
many ways actually to avoid garbage collector pressure in net application. But the general rules are the following. Release object reference when they are no longer needed. Since the objects are not reference, the garbage collector did not promote them to higher generation and reclaiming the memory. Also try to avoid using objects that have multiple reference. In this case, objects remain referenced if, um, if they are no longer being used. Since the objects are live and remain referenced, the garbage collector just promote them to the generations instead of reclaiming the memory. Also try to avoid the use of large objects, written then 85 kilobytes inside if it's actually possible. Unlike the small object heap, the large object heap is not uh, compacted during garbage collect. The reason is that the cost of uh, compaction for large objects, meaning object greater than 85 kilobytes inside, is actually very high. And moving them around in the memory would be very time consuming. Therefore, the garbage collector never moves large objects. It simply removes them when they are no longer needed. Consequently, memory holes are formed in the large object heap, causing the memory fragmentation. And actually, the memory fragmentation is uh, not cheap thing. Also, try to create short-lived object as much as possible in your application. Uh, it will allow you to just release the memory in generation zero. And actually try to avoid um, collect method. When you call the collect method, the runtime conducts a stack wall to decide which items are reachable and which are not. Uh, this triggers a blocking garbage collector across all the generation. Thus, a call to the collect method is a time consuming and resource insensitive operation that should be avoided, if it's actually possible and actually try to avoid any memory leaks. Not surprisingly that the memory leak also the determinal to application performance. They can cause performance issue as well as garbage collector pressure. When memory leaks occur, the object remain referenced even if they are no longer be used. Since the objects are live and remain referenced, the garbage collector promote them through the higher generation instead of just reclaiming the memory and such promotions are very expensive. And this causes garbage collection to do more frequent collection to free memory space. So summarizing the above, you probably noticed that actually all the optimizations make use uh, of one of more the following core concepts. Allocations should be avoided if it's possible. Reusing memory is better than allocating new memory. Allocating on the stack is faster than allocating on the heap. And actually, they are not the only concepts in performance optimization, but probably the most important ones when it comes to garbage collector pressure. Also, it is worth uh, nothing to huge uh, contribution of the community in reducing actually allocation which is in a part about reducing direct cost, but uh, more so about reducing the load placed on the garbage collector and minimizing the work it needs to do in the net core and the most recent release of net. As we saw in the example, uh, the examples, uh, the overall performance level of garbage collector did go up in net core, but in some examples, net framework still topped. Albeit slightly. So despite all the improvements, memory problems have not completely disappeared. And it is still important to understand how memory works and how to deal with these problems. It means that you should always keep in mind to, that to avoid the actually garbage collector performance issue in your net and net core application, including the garbage collector pressure, you should follow the best practices and actually the general rules. So I assume this is it from my side that I wanted to show you today. Maybe you have any questions. I will be happy to answer them. Here you